Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another video. Before I get into explaining what we're doing today, the first thing I wanna do is put this pressure gauge on my fuel pressure regulator so that I can always know what my fuel pressure is at. And then after that, I'll explain to you where we're going today and what we're gonna do. Okay, so when you want to uh, install one of these uh, pressure gauges on your fuel pressure regulator, it's actually really simple to do. All you're going to want first is some shop rags or something to absorb the fuel that's going to leak out of the regulator when you uh, undo that little bung there. In my case, it's a little Allen key bung, so I'm going to need some Allen keys. Um, I'm going to need a small shifter as well, and that's so I can tighten uh, the gauge to it itself. You can use a spanner for whatever size that is. It looks like a 12 mil on mine. Um, and then you're going to want some Teflon tape for the threads of that too to help it seal, stop it from leaking. Because uh, uh, for me, we run three kilos of um, uh, boost, uh, not boost, sorry, <laughs> three kilos uh, of, of fuel pressure. So um, we want to make sure that uh, none of that fuel is going to leak out anywhere. Another good idea too is uh, we are dealing with some fuel leaking out. So it's a good idea to disconnect the battery terminals just so there's no voltage going anywhere, no sparks can occur. That's going to cause a fire to start. So uh, I'm going to get started on that now and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we're done. Okay, so the gauge is now installed, got that on there looking good and in the right orientation as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prime the fuel pump. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to turn the ignition on until you hear the fuel pump come on. There you go. You can hear that. And if I come over here, we can see that right now the gauge is saying that we're at two kilos of pressure. Now, once the engine starts and the fuel pump's constantly on, that should be at three. So uh, this is why it's important that uh, you have one of these gauges because you always need to be able to know what your fuel pressure is at. If, um, I do plan in the future to actually uh, um, take this uh, manual gauge off and putting the sensor on there and plugging that into the Link ECU. That way I've got it digitally in there um, and that way the ECU as well, if ever fuel pressure drops, it will uh, know to cut off the engine and save it from leaning out and stuff like that. But for now, this is, uh, this is what I'm going to do because those sensors are like $250, $300. Um, but let's uh, let's start her up. Make sure she's uh, in neutral, and uh, see what the pressure's sitting at. There we go. And yeah, so we're just under three kilos of um, of pressure right now, fuel pressure. And if we uh, rev that up, we can see she goes up to the three. Perfect. That's exactly where you want because. Uh, when you're uh, in the high RPM range, you want your fuel pressure to definitely be at the three kilo mark, um, so that you know my 740 injectors can uh, keep up with uh, you know they've got enough fuel to be able to supply the engine. All right, guys, so I feel much better now. Um, in case you didn't notice from like the intro video, I probably looked really groggy and my face was unshaven and stuff. Um, I've been doing night shifts, brutal night shifts, like 9 p.m. to uh, 9 a.m. It's type of stuff, and it's been it's been killer, like crazy difficult on me. Um, but anyways, I feel much better now. I washed my face, had a shave, um, and uh, I'm trying to, you know, I woke up early today after sleeping all day yesterday to try and like reset my body clock and get back into a normal routine. Uh, we're just coming off the highway now. We're actually heading to Up Garage today. We're then heading to Tome, and then we're also going to the SDF tuning shop. Um, so first thing we're doing at Up Garage is we're getting some new um, rear adjustable tension arms that I kind of bent and damaged at Ebisu Matsuri. Um, then we're also going to be going to Tome to talk to them about sponsorship for cams. And then we're also going to be going to uh, SDF to get them to one, look at my rear subframe and get them to weld it and repair it after the Driftman Siri accident. And then two, uh, we're also going to be talking to them about getting a retune uh, with the new cams to do some comparison video stuff with you guys. Um, as well as uh, we're gonna be working on uh, with Massa to do a video on tuning cars in the future as well, like a proper kind of production type of video. Um, and then also I've got one of our SR20 uh, intake manifolds um, that we're gonna be giving to SDF to promote here in Japan as well. So I'm really pumped about that. But anyways, uh, let's just focus on driving and getting there and then we'll show you guys around. Alrighty, here we are at Up Garage, my favorite place, parked next to a JZX100. Looks kinda nice. He's got much better uh, lock and stance on the front though. Drift stance on the front is what I call it. Anyways, uh, we're gonna head inside and uh, hopefully they've got the D-Max arms in stock that I want. Generally they do, they've always got a pretty good stock. Okay, so this is their D-Max arm stock and uh, the way that it works is you look at everything up here on the sheet 
and you look at the number of what you want and then you correlate that with down here to check out the pricing. So these here are your tension arms for all of your S14 chassis up and R33, R34 up. Look here, number 12, oops. Try not and do what I just did. And then, then that's your price. So then what you gotta do is look for the box down here with that same number. So there we go, 12. And then you can check as well by just checking on the label there as well that you've got the right one. They generally have English on these boxes so it's pretty easy to tell. And you're all good. That's what we want. All right, so I'm just going through all of the uh, like secondhand arms and stuff like that. And do you guys remember that lower control arm I broke at Ebisu drifting the other day? They've got one here. Um, it's off a of Laurel and it's off the C35, which is actually the same as the 33s and 34s. It's freaking 790 yen. Power vehicles charged me 7,000 yen for that. Ripped off, man, I feel wrecked there. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. Um, one thing I did find as well though, is they've got some tie rod ends here for about 50 bucks, D-Max ones. Uh, they look pretty good condition, so we might try those out. There's another few here as well, it looks like. Alrighty, so I ended up getting the tie rod ends as well. Uh, the brand new ones were literally only $20 difference in price. So I was like stuff getting those older ones that were kind of rusted up and the seals like the the plastic protection stuff was a bit frayed and broken Like uh, it's just ridiculous $20 difference for the brand new pair. So I just went for those Wifey's gonna probably kill me for spending a bit of money, but uh, I really need these so I can get the car aligned and safe again So we'll be fine. All right got the goodies from up garage now we're going to head around the corner to Tomei. All right, so I just arrived at Tomei. Um, and if you guys don't know, that's literally up garage there. So you walk out of the tire wheel section, walk down here, and then you can go visit Tomei. So I'm going to go in there now, have a meeting with them. Not going to take the camera with me um, unless uh, they got something cool to show me and they let me film. So I'm putting you guys back in the car and then I'll come back down and uh, hopefully I'll have some good news for you. Okay, so always a good time hanging out with the Tomei guys. We had quite a few good laughs and uh, we just sat around looking at my engine bay for quite a while just talking about how awesome it is that you can get such a good power figure out of such a simple setup. Um, one thing though we they did talk to me about was that apparently some YouTubers came there earlier this week and they specifically asked them not to film like their faces or the person that was giving the tour at the the tour guide person for the the factory tour that they did for them and then they uploaded the video and they when they thought the camera was off the camera was on the entire time and they uploaded all this footage of him in the like when they specifically asked him not to show the faces and stuff so uh, that was a bit disappointing um, I'm not sure who the youtuber is they said uh, that it might be Kudo lifestyle which I've never heard of so I'll check that out later but just a heads up for you guys if um, if you are coming to the Tomei uh, factory to film and stuff like that they have no problem they're super nice they have they, they want you to come in they love showing you the factory but just respect them when they say hey don't film my face or, or film the person who's giving the tour like just be really careful with that anyways uh, that's a little bit of negativity and grrr stuff so anyways good news is they're sorting me out with cams at the end of this month we're definitely getting the first batch from the factory floor I'm super pumped um, they're really excited too because we get to do back-to-back -back dyno um, things to show you guys the difference that cams make as well as they're gonna hook me up with a down pipe the just a little elbow that comes off the back of the turbo tome sells like the biggest widest one that fits on the back of those factory turbos so um, I'm really pumped to put that on there and see the difference that that makes on the dyno as well because we did have some exhaust flow issues because of that so anyways uh, we're driving to SDF now once we get there I'll pull out the camera and I'll uh, show you guys around and what we're doing there as well all right guys so we've just uh, gotten to SDF here you guys uh, got some really nice cranes wheels there but what I wanted to show you guys is this is a buddy of mine called Scott and he's an American dude that's out of here working on base um, but this is his I think they said 850 horsepower they're aiming for the 900s uh, after they do some more work on it that uh, military planes a little bit frustrating <laughs> But uh, anyways, um, yeah, so they're aiming for 900s after a little bit more work. And uh, we, uh, this is one of the Itaka Garage intake manifolds for the 26. We sent this out to him, I think over a year ago now. And uh, it's just good to see this in person because this was before, this was our very first gen one before we did any logo engraving and uh, a few changes here with sensors and things like that for the water. But it's just, it's just good to see your product on someone's car like this and uh, it doing so well, especially at the 850 horsepower mark. That's freaking awesome. Uh, hopefully they do well after the next uh, bunch of tuning and stuff like that and they can get up to the 900s. But this turbo, man, 
here's a can of coke for comparison this thing is huge um, I think Denny was saying that he had to ch customize the engine mounts to lower the engine just so it would clear the flipping hood like look how big that rear housing is there it's it's definitely substantial <laughs> uh, anyways uh, Mus is getting ready to do some uh, some tuning on their one of their shop cars this is one of their rental drift cars it's a uh, Mark II, obviously, or what Chaser, JZX100, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty much the same car, just looks a bit different, right? From, from the rear and the front. Um, so this is one of their uh, cars that they hire out. So you can hire one of these, I think it's for like a grand for a full day and you just pay tires and gas on top of that. They drive you to the track and everything and they support you. It's pretty good deal. Anyways, so yeah, they're putting a link ECU in this and uh, tuning her up today. So it'd be kind of nice. There's the uh, link four bar map sensor and everything so we might film a couple runs of this later when uh Mus is in the driver's seat doing some setting it'd be kind of cool to uh film that again but uh yeah just enjoying hanging out with the guys i spoke to denny about the rear subframe uh he said that's an easy fix so we're gonna weld that up and fix that and uh we'll get a wheel alignment done but otherwise for now i'm gonna put the camera away i'm gonna drink my free coke that they gave me and we're just gonna hang out for a bit. All right guys, so I'm heading home now and I had a really good time hanging out with the guys at SDF. Um, I had a good chat with uh, Denny about the SR20 prototype manifold I gave him. He's going to be putting that in his display room to show his customers and to promote the product and sell it to his customers and things like that. Um, and it's just good, you know, to have someone like him on board with it as well because he can give me some feedback and any changes he wants to see happen or stuff like that in future revisions, we can do that as well. It's just really good to get feedback from other tuners here in Japan. You know, first we got Okachan to give us some feedback and now we're going to have Denny working with this as well. So the more feedback we get, the better we can make the product in the end right so i'm really happy about that um and uh, we're just heading home now once we get home i'm going to put those d-max arms on do another eyeball alignment and then next week um, we're going to go back to sdf denny's going to weld up my subframe and then we're going to do a proper alignment and then things should be mint for uh okajuku drift event on the 16th so uh it's going to be pretty intense um, we're probably just gonna make the event in time with a wheel alignment, so it'll be good. All right, so it's actually a couple days later now. The weather got really bad and it was just raining a whole bunch, so I couldn't work on the car. Now it's actually Monday, my day off, and I'm planning to go to SDF after I get these arms installed, because we're gonna weld the subframe up then, uh, and then we're also gonna do an alignment, get everything ready, because on Wednesday, in two days, I have another drift event with Okachan, another Okajuku event, um, so it's gonna be really good. Anyways, let's get these arms swapped out. Okay, so we're done on this side now. The new D-Max arm is in there and I've just eyeballed the alignment again. Um, I wanted to show you before we move to the other side, uh, the difference between the arms. Now, before we, we look at this, see how this is bent here? It's actually pretty badly on the angle like this. And then this as well is bent. It's leaning that way right now, if we look at that. So that's why I had to adjust the toe so much at the track to compensate and get this thing kind of like sort of aligned so that I could drive home. Now, one thing I want to show you is, look at the thickness difference between these D-Max arms and these, uh, I don't know what these are. They kind of like came from Up Garage for like two, 20 bucks, like the full set. It was crazy cheap um, because they didn't know what brand they were. So I'm assuming these are like Chinese ones. Um, but yeah, it's pretty mangled and bent and really small. But like these D-Max ones are just such, like way more solid. The stud and everything that they uh, thread that comes in here is like another couple gauges thicker. It's um, a much solid tension arm, that's for sure. And the bearing's much bigger. Uh, even just the fork arms here are so much more stronger. So um, yeah, definitely probably gonna keep sticking to using D-Max arms from now on because I just think that they're gonna be able to survive a lot more uh, thrashing and bashing on this thing. But those cheap arms that I picked up from Up Garage for 20 bucks uh, definitely lasted me. And the, the camber arms that came with them are, um, pretty damn uh pretty damn solid they're massive actually like really thick ones so hopefully they hold up and keep holding up um, but otherwise we'll just swap them out for d-max ones in the future as well
Okay, so I don't know about you, but uh, that looks properly stuffed. <laughs> um, we're definitely going to be uh, swapping that out, and this is actually one of the main reasons why we're swapping it out is because I knew my tie rod ends were starting to get uh, pretty shot. So um, what I'm going to do before I uh, rip them off is I'm going to clean this up with some brake cleaner and put some uh, markings there with a textile or a pen uh, just so I can actually try and work out the alignment and try and get it as best as I can so that my car's not going to be drifting all over the place while I'm driving to SDF to get the alignment. Uh, the other thing is um, I can see that my wheel's been rubbing here and so you can see that a little bit there and then I can also see obviously I've been smashing that bump stop down in there. That right there that rack stop so what we might try and do while we're at sdf is i'll talk to uh denny and we might quickly plasma cut that uh that stop off because getting an angle grinder in there sucks um but otherwise we're going to swap this out as quick as we can with the new dmax one and uh, we'll get that done asap Alright, so I'm pretty much finished now. Um, all I need to do is pack up all my tools and we can head to SDF. Um, one thing I did want to show you is just how completely stuffed uh, this ball joint is here on this tie rod end. It's like full of rocks and stuff and it can only move certain ways because of those rocks that are jammed in there. And let's see, can I put my foot on it and move it around? You can hear it. Like it's just grinding in there and it's really stiff and yeah, she's she's stuffed. <laughs> uh, so anyways, I'm gonna pack up all my tools and then we're gonna head to SDF, probably get lunch on the way. So uh, let's quickly get that done. All right, so we made it to SDF in the end with my super sketch uh, eyeball front alignment. It was fun driving here, but uh, well, obviously uh, getting everything uh, tidied up now. We're gonna get that rear part in the subframe welded and uh, full wheel alignment plus new front tires because the ones on the front are super, uh, due to a bad alignment, I guess, from those toe arms. Super worn on the edges here and starting to like chunk away and see belt, so we need to fix that. Alright, so we're just wrapping things up now, we've got the new tyres on the front, everything's all nice and aligned again. Can't wait to drive this thing with a fresh alignment, it's been so long. Alright guys, so jumping ahead now, I'm actually home. I needed to get home really quickly so that there was enough light for me still to be able to clean and scrub my driveway. Um, as you know, like previously in the, in the uh, past, I had an oil leak and uh, just when I was installing things, it left a few oil stains kind of like in the driveway. Now it is black bitumen, but it is still very obvious that it's there. And I wanted to scrub and clean that and try and get all that oil out so that uh, when the landlord comes to visit and things like that, all the neighbors don't get upset that I'm making a mess. But uh, anyways, uh, I did all that, managed to do that. Um, I'm about to play some PUBG, uh, but otherwise that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. I know it was kind of all over the place with a few days and things like that. Uh, but nonetheless, thanks heaps for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Check out all my social media down in the description. And if you want to send me slap stickers, my PO box address is there. Next vlog, we're going to be drifting at Okajuku at Tsukuba Jim Kana again. Really excited for that and playing around and learning my car and that new power band all over again. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. Jamatane. <laughs>